Hi, Tom here. In this week's Circle Line Art School video, I'll show you one way to draw an oak tree using a pencil. If you'd like to learn more about how to draw, please visit circlelineartschool.com. The first step is to make a loose sketch of the basic shapes of the tree. Start by sketching a short, wide tree trunk towards the base of your paper. and then add just the beginnings of some of the main branches. Next, loosely sketch in the basic shape of the tree using a soft fluid line. And we can use these lines as a guideline for the basic shapes. Next, we can use the same pencil and press down a little bit more firmly to create a more precise edge for the base of the tree trunk and the start of the branches. So we're fixing the tree trunk in place now. Next, using the side of the pencil, you could add some shading to the tree trunk. I'm making this tree darker on the right hand side and it will be lighter on the left hand side because the light source that's illuminating the tree is coming from the left. So now we've got a mid-tone on the tree. We can add some indications of some of the textural marks of the bark of the oak tree, particularly on the lighter side, the left-hand side of the tree trunk. Now we could make the tree trunk on the right-hand side even darker. So we started with a mid-tone and now we're doing a dark tone. So the darkest point of the tree will be on the right-hand side of the tree trunk and probably on the starts of the branches of the tree too. So for this, you just need to look at your drawing and see what sort of tones would work best for the drawing that you're doing. But if you make the tree trunk dark, it will make it solid and that will help make the branches seem looser and more free. So having that contrast between the dark tones of the tree trunk should contrast well with the lighter, more fluid tones and shapes of the branches of leaves. When adding shading tonal values to a drawing, it's normally best to start with lighter tones and then make them darker until you get to the mood because tones really create a mood in a drawing so you get to the mood that you wish to create for your drawing. Next, using the side of the pencil we can sketch in some very basic mid-tones not dark or light but somewhere in the middle for some of the areas of the branches and leaves of the tree. This will take a little time to build up and because we're going step by step, try not to finish any area of the canopy of the tree too early because we're trying to develop the whole area in stages. So these mid-tones, we need to put them in in quite a lot of areas because most of the tree is darker than the tone of the paper that we're drawing on. So we need to just block in these mid-tones, remembering that the light source is coming from the left. So there will be more mid-tones on the right-hand side. So what we're doing here is just blocking in a tone that we're going to work on later on. So it's not the finished product, as it were. It's just a stage, a step in a drawing so that we're creating a sense of tone. Next, we could add some indications of branches which are visible between the clumps of leaves. I'm trying not to draw the branches as continuous dark shapes because the leaves, which are lighter, will break the structure of the tree up. So I'm just looking and continuing some of the branches, leaving some gaps 
which hopefully will be created as bunches and areas of leaves later on. Now clearly the size of the branches will vary and as they get towards the edge of the tree will become much thinner. As you draw the branches, try not to concentrate on any one area. Every time you draw a branch, try to look at it in relation to the other branches and the other areas of tree that we've already drawn. So we're not drawing individual parts. Well, we are drawing individual parts, but we're trying to make sure that the individual parts work as a total tree. So don't get too bogged down in trying to make one thing perfect. Try to make the whole tree work step by step. And then the plan will be that it will gradually evolve into a better drawing. Next, we can use the same pencil again, but just pressing down to get a slightly dark tone in some areas. Again, as you're drawing, think about how the light is coming from the left hand side and move the area in which you're drawing around a lot. So you're not just drawing one branch or one clump of leaves, but we're slowly developing areas of leaves. We definitely don't want to be drawing each leaf individually. Also, probably not a good idea to simplify it too much. So the aim, the sort of sweet spot, is between a lot of detail and simplicity. We're trying to get a drawing which has the feeling of a lot of detail, but in actual fact it's quite loosely drawn. And to do that, the best way is to move the area in which you're drawing around so you don't get fixated on one area, but you move the part that you're drawing from one area to another again and again and again. So if you think what we've got is the dark tones of the tree trunk and the branches showing between the leaves, they're the darkest tones that we've got. And then we've got a mid-tone over much of the tree but not all of it. And then we drew some darker tonal areas and now we can add some even darker smaller patches and then if we draw these sort of broken edges of a line and then make one side of the broken edge of a line have a tone but not the other side and then the tone the shading that the dark side of the edge has it sort of blends away so the tone is darker by the line that we're drawing and then it sort of fades away a little bit as the tone, as the shading goes away from the line. Now, if we use the pencil even flatter on its side, so that we're really using the flat side of the pencil, and then we can place a soft tonal value over much of the drawing of the tree, but not all of it. So we're leaving little pockets of areas which have not got any shading at all. By adding these soft tones using the flat side of the pencil, it's sort of merging together some of the pockets of tone that we've already created. And then we can repeat this, but just press down more firmly to create the darker areas within the tree canopy. So now this drawing is starting definitely to be darker on the right hand side and lighter on the left hand side. Next, we could use the flat side of an eraser just to smudge around a little bit so that nothing gets too fixed. Now the tree is blended, we can start adding some smaller details by picking out some darker tonal areas amongst the leaves of the tree. So the aim here is to make these small marks link with the marks that we've already got on the tree to give the illusion that there are many leaves without drawing all of the leaves and to give the 
sense that there's light falling on the tree and it has areas which are darker and then areas which are lighter. The tree itself makes shadows within the leaves and light areas within the leaves. So the tonal values of trees are really interesting when they're in sunshine. So as you develop your drawing, try to continue to move the area that you're drawing around so you don't get too fixed on one area. And try not to repeat shapes too much. Make each shape hopefully slightly different so that it doesn't become a pattern. So a tree clearly has a structure, but we don't want to simplify it so much that it looks like a pattern. So it's almost like a hidden structure of the tree by drawing in these steps of different tones and different marks rather than creating a pattern that just repeats and repeats the same thing repeating again. If we draw a pattern, it will look perhaps too stylized. So to make a tree look more realistic, we need to keep the structure, the tonal structure that we've been drawing, and the physical structure of the branches and the leaves. We need to keep the structure, but have a looseness of a variety of different marks. And that combination should hopefully create a tree that looks more realistic. Next, when you're ready, we could draw a horizon behind the tree trunk low down on the page. And then above the horizon, I think I'll put a line of trees. And then below the actual tree on the left and right of the tree trunk, the where we started the drawing, we could draw the shadow that the tree is casting on the ground. So these trees in the background, we could just sketch a mid-tonal value on these first of all. Again, keeping them quite loose, nothing too harsh. And then using a sharp pencil, just sharpening the pencil that you're using, we can create some really dark edges. So the light in this drawing is always coming from the left hand side. So try not to judge your drawing too much as you're doing it, because we're really trying to make the whole drawing work as a totality, so that by the end of the drawing it all works. So it's useful when drawing to make sure that you don't overwork a drawing. It's often difficult to decide when to finish a drawing. But generally speaking, a drawing is finished when you can't see what else to do. So one of the best ways to see improvements in your drawing is to every now and then go back to the same subjects again and again and draw them in slightly different ways. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you subscribe to my YouTube channel, Circle Line Art School, where I have hundreds of free drawing tutorials on drawing all sorts of different subjects. And if you want to know more about Circle Line Art School, please visit circlelineartschool.com where you can find details of my online drawing courses. Thanks for watching and see you next time.